With just a few small changes, you can make Fusion easier, faster, and way more enjoyable to use. In this video, I'll show you how to set up Fusion to be clean, customized, and ready to match your workflow. So let's get started. Number one, preferences setup. We'll start with the most important part of a Fusion setup, your preferences. Go to your profile picture, then preferences, and under the general tab, you'll find all the options that define how Fusion behaves. And you can switch to light or dark mode, depending on what's easiest for your eyes, or change the languages if you like and here this is a good one if it's not on already you can set auto save every five minutes seriously this can save you hours if something crashes and if it's not on already under tooltips choose extended this way every time you hover over a tool you'll get a short explanation of what it does it's one of the best ways to learn fusion faster no while you're in preferences take a second to scroll through the design section this is where you can control things like how sketches automatically project geometry and if you're just getting started i'd recommend to keep auto project edges on reference turned on. It saves time when sketching whilst you work. Number two, navigation and view controller. In the preferences menu, open up pan zoom orbit shortcuts. Here you can change the navigation style. And if you use another CAD program, you can pick the one that matches what you're used to. That way you won't have to relearn the basic movement controls. You can also enable reverse zoom direction if scrolling feels upside down to you. Any small tweak can make fusion feel instantly more comfortable and also intuitive. Another helpful tip, check out the orbit behavior. This should be set to constrained orbit, and this helps if you want Fusion to stop flipping the model upside down. Alternatively, you can choose free orbit if you prefer a more freeform form of movement. You also have another option here, which is quite useful, and it should be marked as on already, but if not, you can switch it on, and this allows you to use the spacebar to repeat the last command you did. Not a lot of people know about that feature, and it can save a lot of time. Number three, customizing your toolbar. By default, Fusion shows you a ton of tools, and honestly, you most likely won't need all of them when you're starting out. Here, you can hide tool groups you don't use and drag your favourite commands right to the front and that just keeps things simple and also focused. You can also press the three dots next to the tool and pin it to the toolbar. And a tidy toolbar means less distractions, faster muscle memory, and a workspace that feels like your own. You can also create toolbars for different workspaces. To do that, click the workspace drop down on the top left, and you can switch between design, render, or manufacture, and tailor each toolbar individually, like you can in a design workspace. Number four, browser and components organization. The browser panel on the left is where everybody, sketch, and component lives. If you ever try to find something in a messy project, you know how fast straight in that can be. I've talked about this in my previous videos. It's good to make a habit to rename parts as soon as you create them. Instead of body four, for example, call it handle or base plate, something that you know what it is. You can also make groups of bodies in folders relating parts together. For example, fasteners all in one folder or putting particular bodies in another. And if your screen feels cluttered, just toggle off visibility icons by clicking the eye icon for sketches and planes that you're not using. Now here's a pro tip, right click on a component and use activate. This isolates just the part by itself and hides any unrelated geometry, which can make edits faster. You can also assign appearances or colours to specific components to make your complex designs easier to read. As well as appearances, there's another way to do this. In the utilities, click display component colours and it will change each component to a colour. And you can cycle through the colours by right clicking on the component and pressing cycle component colour. Number five, default units and templates. Now let's take care of our units and templates. Fusion sometimes switches units, depending on where your file came from, so it's best to lock this down early. In preferences, under default units, set your preference measurement systems, millimetres, inches, or even centimetres. And a quick question, what measurement systems do you usually design in? I know a lot of viewers are split between millimetres and also inches, and I'd love to see which one wins. Let me know in the comments section down below. You can also save the setup as a template. If you're going to use the same part setup often, you can store all of your preferred settings, so projects stay consistent. Assistant. Just save the file and call the name of the file template and you can save this in a shared project folder and make a copy when you start a new project and you'll have access to the same base setup each time. Number six, visual style and grid settings. Now let's look at the visual setup. In the display settings menu, choose your preferred visual style. I use shaded with hidden edges most. This gives depth to your model and keeps outlines visible. You can also adjust the grid settings and if you find it distracting, you can turn it off or if you like a sense of scale, you can keep it on but enable snap 
adapt to grit and this will allow sketching to the grit. The goal is to make your workspace easy on your eyes and also efficient for the way that you think. You can also turn the view here to multiple views. Some people do find this useful if you need to view multiple angles of the model at the same time. I don't use this feature that often, however it can be useful from time to time and I know some people even prefer to model in this way so you can choose which one you like most. Number 7. Custom Keyboard Shortcuts Now let's talk about one of the fastest ways to speed up your workflow. Keyboard Shortcuts Fusion already has built in shortcuts for most common actions. For example pressing L for line, C for circle or E for extrude. But here's the part most beginners miss. You can actually create your own keyboard shortcuts. If you find the tool that you'd like to create the shortcut for and press on the three dots next to it you can change that keyboard shortcut. So if there's a tool that you use consistently like offset or project for example you can assign something that's easy to reach. Something like maybe Alt O or Alt P for example. It might take a few minutes to set up but once your muscle memory kicks in you'll work much faster like this. And also if you ever forget which shortcuts have been assigned just hover over the command and Fusion will show you this in the tooltip. Number 8. View cube and display adjustments. You can also rotate to a required view and set as your custom home view. Now every time you hit home your model snaps back to that exact angle. This can be useful if you have a particular view that you need to keep going back to and you can also under display settings check object visibility. This lets you toggle things like sketch dimensions, construction lines or joints on and off with a single click. It's great for decluttering your workspace and allowing you to focus on specific features. The less noise on screen the easier it is to model accurately and you can also reset your settings by going to preferences and clicking on restore defaults. And that's it, your perfect fusion setup.